grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Ambassador Chantro Davis. Today is January the 25th of 2018, and it is 12 p.m. Central Time. Let's come together in one accord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that I'm alive for such a time as this, Father God. Thank you that you saw fit to wake me this day, Father God. I thank you that I awaked because you sustained me and that your grace is sufficient for me this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, Father God, which is my reasonable act of worship. Father God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is operating in and through me, that is alive, that is energizing in me. I yield to the speaker of this house, Father God, the one who is my sifter, my leader, my guider, my teacher. He is my advantage, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I yield to your will, Father God, not my will, that your will be done in me in fullness this day, Father God. I decree and declare that this word will go forth unhindered and unchecked by any outside force, Father God. I decree and declare there will be great receptivity, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus over not only my ears, hearts, mind, will, and emotion, Father God, but I plead the holy blood of Jesus over the ears of the listeners, Father God, not just this day, but every day this message is heard, Father God. And I decree and declare penetration of your word, Father God, the engrafted word that is able to save their souls, Father God, the interest of their words that gives them life, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I decree edification from that word, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I come against every foul thought, every high reasoning that set itself against your true knowledge, Father God. I decree null and void the mischief that they have planned against this word, against this ministry, Father God, against the hearts of the believers, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that they will be exalted this day, Father God, by your word, Father God. God. I thank you that by your spirit I will rightly divide this word of truth in love, Father God, and with boldness, Father God, and with accuracy, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I say again, not my will, but your will be done, Father God. I thank you for your word that is alive, that is effective, that is energizing, and that is always enough, Father God. We trust our lives to the provision of your word this day, Father God. We thank you not only for your written word, but every word that proceeds out of your mouth, Father God, day to day. We thank you, Father God, that you have not left us as orphans, Father God, but you guide us day to day, Father God, by your spirit, Father God. And we incline our ears to wisdom and apply our hearts to understanding this day, Father God, that we, we may hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, Father God, that we may move forth on right word in due season, Father God, for we know how good it is, Father God, that we may move forth, Father God, and I thank you, Father God, but by your spirit, I have the tongue of the learned, the tongue of the wise, Father God, and the tongue of the prudent, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that it brings forth and speaks good things into my life and to the lives of others, Father God, and in the name of Jesus, it turns down the things of the wicked kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Father God, be exalted to stay in and through me, Father God. I bless you, Father God, for every listener, Father God, every subscriber, Father God. I send forth your blessing and your sufficient grace upon their lives, Father God. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood, I decree and declare that such as should be added to the church this day that you have ordained from the foundation of the earth shall be added. In the name of Jesus, unhindered and unchecked. I plead your holy blood. I loose every one angel, every chief angel over our prospective areas, Father God, and I bind up principalities and powers that would oppose them in the heavenly realm, Father God. And I thank you that what I bind on earth is bound in heaven and what I loose on earth is loose in heaven. I thank you, Father God, that you hasten to perform your word. You look after to perform it. And I thank you for the angels that are minister for those of us who are heirs of salvation, that they are sent forth, Father God, to minister for those of us who are heirs, Father God. They excel in strength. They hearken unto the voice of the word of God. And we have sent forth your voice, Father God, in your word. And we thank you that it will not return unto you void. We bless you, Father God. I seal this prayer, Father God, in the name of Jesus and by the spirit of God, I say amen. Today's message, I shall have said today's third, fourth, I don't know how many happened today, but another message from the Lord this day. Uh, the title of this message, and I want y'all to hearken, um, since you say you can see, your sin remains. True versus false light. I'm going to say that again. Since you say you can see, your sin remains. Y'all better start learning to claim ignorance. Okay. He's patient with the ignorant, truly ignorant. But if you want to say you know it all, he'll let you think you know it all. True versus false light. And this thing has multifacets, but I'm going to stay only on what he gave me because the, his word is so alive, it means one thing and another. Because since you can say you can see those who keep trying to bring you back under the law, those are people who say they can see. They sin going to remain. Y'all get where I'm going? But he's bringing this to more of a practical thing right now. But I want y'all to keep the mental note of that as that part of sin you can see is those who try to put you back under the law. They sin remains. You can't see. That's darkness. 
But he's bringing a practical sense because the enemy is going to get a lot of people with practicality. OK, that's why this message is being brought forth today. John 9, 39 through 41. And Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world. Excuse me, that they would see. Oh, that they would see not might see. OK, he was talking about the law and they which see might be made blind. OK. Those who were not under the law, because we know it was not given to the Gentiles, it was given to the tribes. So he came so that those that say they can see, he going to show them they can't see. And those who can't, which means they ain't under the law, he going to give them the true sight, which is the light of the kingdom and of grace. And some Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we also blind? And we know they Pharisees, they was under the law. We children of Abraham, we Pharisees, how you going to say we, we can't see? Jesus said unto them, if ye were blind, Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. I want y'all to catch this. If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Okay? If you were blind, your sin wouldn't be there. Okay? You was blind by the law. You see by the light of the spirit. I'm going to say that again. You was blind by the law, but you see by the light of the spirit. Okay? That's why they were blind. But again, this is going into a practical message. You need to know practicality of some of the trickery of the enemy today. And I'm going to keep telling you, we're not under law, we're under grace. And if you mix the two, he's going to spew you out. Using the law, you're blind. You better come under the grace. So you see by the light of the kingdom. Okay. Light is of the Lord and Satan. I want you all to make a note of this. Satan imitates all the Christ of God is. He imitates seeing. He imitates dreams. He imitates light. He imitates knowledge. He is a the great pretender. Okay. He the great pretender. That's why he said he roams about as a lion. He ain't no lion. As a lion. Seeking who he can devour. There's only one line, the line of the a tribe of Judah. Matthew 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. Can any of y'all catch how he tricks people with this? The all seeing eyes of God. <laughs> the light of the body is the eye. It, which all eyes are his, but oh, let, me, let, me, let me stay on point. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, focused, the whole body shall be full of light. But if then I be evil, mm, 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 mm. evil, divided, contrary, dear God, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Wow. I'm, I'm getting something. Y'all give me a minute. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? What does he mean? If the light in you be darkness, how great is that light? I'm going to go down and just read some of the things with light being because y'all that list of light, y'all have no idea how. No, I got to wait because that list is so long. Y'all going to understand. So please track with me. Y'all going to understand why that's such a vast. What he just said is so vast. OK. If the light that is in thee be darkness. How great is that darkness? OK. I'm going to read in him. There is no darkness. First John 1, 5 through 7. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. None. If you say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, if we say that we have fellowship with him, but yet we walk in darkness. OK. Then we lie and do not the truth. OK. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. The light of the kingdom shineth upon you. You walk in the light. You can't go back and forth. Darkness. That's the law. Light. That's the kingdom of grace and light and salvation. And I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this. If the light in you be darkness and I'm going to get to the practical stuff, but I got to lay this scripture. Okay. Yeah, I already read that. I'm just going to give you all grace. Uh, even how he dealt with Paul. Paul thought he knew. 
He was literally fighting against God, but he thought he knew. Paul was zealous because he really believed that these Christians, these people who followed Jesus was coming against the one true Messiah. And he was literally fighting the Messiah because he thought he could see. And it was based on the law and the ordinance of Moses. They were caught up in the religious robes and fringes. They thought they could see. He started off, you notice, and y'all can find the scripture because I'm flowing out of the spirit right now. He started off saying that he was a chief apostle. Y'all go check by the end. He said, I'm chief sinner and least worthy because the grace of God will show you just how filthy you were. And that you only say by grace that no flesh can glory in his presence. He concluded all under sin, the Gentiles and the Jews, so that no flesh could glory in his presence. Everybody coming in through grace, by faith, in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. By grace, through faith, all of them, even those who the law were given to. Because I say again, the law wasn't given to the Gentiles. The law was given to the Jews. The Gentiles were only offered grace. So how they ended up getting mixed, we know how, because we know about how Peter spoke about how Paul confronted Peter because he ate with the Gentiles until the Jews came. Then he withdrew. They were compelling them to practice the law. Some people took that and then you get all these divisions that came off. And that's how it got in, because the, Gent we were, the Gentiles were without hope and loss in the world. They had no God. When it was offered to him, it was only through Jesus and only through grace. They were not given the law. And then the Gentile, the Jews were only given the law to show they needed a savior. And they were under tutors and governors until the, the law was a shadow of the substance that was to come. So once Jesus came, the Jews were supposed to receive him, but they didn't. So salvation came unto the Gentiles. The Gentiles never received the law. They received the fulfillment of the law, which was grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. Very few people would say, and people always like to say they don't, they don't say they know everything, but you can't tell them nothing. Nobody ever, have you ever heard somebody say, I know everything? I ain't never heard nobody say it, but yet you can't tell them nothing. Nobody will say they know everything, but yet everything everybody tells them, they don't believe what they won't receive. Okay. So they don't have to say it. It's implied. <laughs> the Lord takes that implication. Okay. I'm going to go to, uh, furthermore, what I said on Paul. Paul thought he was fighting for the Messiah because they were still waiting on the Messiah to come. He was blind because he was under the law. Okay? And he fell to the earth and heard a voice. We know this is about Paul on his road to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice and seeing no man. Okay? If we of y'all don't know what a prick is, it's hard for you to cook against a prick. You've ever heard anybody put their little wood things on cattle to keep them straight as they plow? And the more the animal struggles, it digs into them. So when you kick it against it, you wounded yourself. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And it's something the Lord got me on. I ain't finished digging it all up, but I want y'all to catch this. And those of you who like to research the word, catch what I'm saying. Do y'all notice that Paul went through some of the things, same things Jesus went through? It's very specifically, how Jesus was taken off the taken in before the chief of the kingdom, which was Pilate, and the and, and they were put before the crowd, and the crowd said, Give us Barabbas, give us Barabbas. And Paul was taken to snatch out of the crowd and brought before the king and they were saying the same thing. I thought that was very, that's just something I'm kind of dropping on you that I'm still kind of thinking on. Because I think he's giving me something on that. Um, and I'm going to go back to the nuggets. If the light in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? Walk in light as he is in the light. If therefore your eye be single. I've read this. Okay, let me go down. Because I'm going back up to the top because I had to read that. Uh, this thing went back up. Now I'm going to start breaking down the practicality of what the Lord is showing. Okay. Yeah, I'd be single. I've already read that. Spiritually perspective, the whole body, the light benefiting from God's pre, uh, precepts and perspectives. OK, I'm going to break down darkness and I'm going to start to give you all practicality what I mean by if the light in you be darkness. OK, it goes literally back to the Garden of Eden, because we know that the Bible says that he declares the end from the beginning. OK. How he walked with us in the garden in the cooler of the day is how it will be again. Do y'all understand the Lord don't see or observe time the way we do? Boy, he showed me something the other day that just made me just want to scream. Because do you notice that the Bible says that 
the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the earth. Do y'all remember hearing that? Find it in the scripture. And then also find the scripture where it says he presented, he presented himself once at the end of the ages with his blood. Purifying the heavenly temple. I want y'all to catch this. He died once for all. At the end of the age. Yet the Bible said he was slain from the foundation of the world. The Lord don't experience time the way we do. He sees it all at once. It's like in reverse. It's a rewind. He's already saw the end. So the Lord, the sl- the la- he was slain from the beginning. God laid out. But he presented his blood at the end of the age once. He was at the beginning. He pr- appeared once again. Y'all can find this scripture because I'm falling out of the spirit. Y'all got to catch this. The Lord is observing time all at once. It's backwards, forward. He, the end has already been de- de- declared. Y'all got to catch this. But I'm going to give y'all the definition of this. And then I'm going to give y'all practicalities of dark light. It's going back to the uh, the Garden of Eden. It was never about power. God is power. When you uh, when we have a relationship with him, we automatically have all that he is. When Adam and Eve fell, they they lost relationship, not power. Do y'all understand that? Why do you think you can still say bad things and bad things come forth? We were renewed through Jesus Christ, but the relationship was severed. Okay? The relationship was severed. The tree was the the serpent getting man to seek knowledge rather than relationship. Do you understand? All this digging and researching, seeking knowledge over relationship, obeying the sound of his voice. You're seeking precepts and ordinances and studies and definitions and Greek words all day rather than the sound of his voice saying, this is the way, walk you in it. Don't go there today. It was always them tree seeking that, that knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Over the relationship of them walking in the garden in the cool of the day with the Lord. Now I'm going to give you definitions. I'm going to give you more examples. Definition of darkness. An unilluminated area. An unenlightened state. That's a state of being. An absence of light or illumination. An absence of moral or spiritual values. Just see how that comes all together? Then I'm going to read 1 John 1 and 7. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, excuse me, cleanseth us from all sin. OK, that's the Holy Spirit connection. The light of the of the kingdom versus dark light. OK, and just like people don't understand, they fast just like we fast. They fast for evil presence. We fast to subdue this body so the spirit can stand up more. It's subduing the flesh so that the spirit man reigns over it. It's a battle for your mind. Your thinker, filler, and chooser. Your spirit wants your mind, and your flesh wants your mind. Your flesh wants to do what it wants to do. And that's why he said the spirit warth against the flesh. Okay? Grace Nugget? Mm. You could be lit up by darkness. Do y'all notice that Lucifer is called the light bringer? False light. He's the great pretender. And I'm going to tell you what light he's bringing. Knowledge. That's why you can't tell scientists and nobody nothing. Knowledge. He promised them knowledge. Over relationship with God. That's dark light. The prince of darkness. That's what they call him. The light bringer. Lucifer. False light. What is that false light? Knowledge. Technology. Science. And the Lord owns science. The Lord created science. But he perverts it. Now the universe just got there without the Lord. Dark light. Dark knowledge. Okay? Seeking knowledge rather than relationship. Um, yeah, I'm gonna read the de- definitions of illuminate. Y'all wait till I get the definition of light. That that's so vast I had to I didn't know where it was gonna stop. And embellishing that they call him the light bringer, the illuminator. Mm-hmm. Definitions of which which is Illuminati. Why you think that Illuminati name? Pay attention. False light, because they setting it up for the, the top of the pyramid. The capstone, Satan to come down. That's why the system is being set up for him to come over and take it over. It's being perverted. Okay? Definitions of illuminate and embellishing a painting uh, or a painting. Medieval manuscripts. That's also part of it, which I found really strange. Make free from confusion. Okay? To make free from confusion or ambiguity. To make clear. To make lighter or brighter. Do you see how they're stealing and robbing? The Lord is light. 
Luminati, Lucifer, the light bringer. How they, the, he is confusion. How's he making free from confusion? Okay, false light. Uh, come up with an idea. We know the ideas come from the Lord. All good things come from the Lord. Every good invention, every good gift. False light. He is an imitator of our Lord. To come up with the idea to arrange by stagnant planning and uniform. The new word order. Y'all get that? To devise. Arrange by systematic planning and united effort. One world religion. One world order. False light. False order. Because the Lord does everything decent in the order. That's what form means. He said that the, in the beginning the earth was void. You notice he said the earth was here? The earth was void. Empty and without form. That means stuff was out of place. Stars over here, this over here. He brought it into form, in alignment, into order, which is what the Lord told me, that if you're out of time and you're out of order and you're into darkness, the, the world was void without form. That means it was out of order. He had to arrange it. Okay? It's false light. Now, I'm going to give y'all some definitions of this light. And I'm going to give y'all practically what he's doing with knowledge and technology. These phones, these watches, you can just Google and find anything. You are filled with the knowledge of this world rather than the knowledge of him. I'm going to say that again. You are filled with the knowledge of this world rather than the knowledge of God. What did it ask you? Did you pray? I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be filled with the knowledge of your will, with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we may walk word of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work. He's trying to fill you with the knowledge of this world, not the knowledge of your Lord and the creator and the one and only living God. Dark light. If the light in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? So what the knowledge that you have, and what you think you know is of the dark kingdom. How great is that darkness? And I'm going to tell you all why that's important, because as it gets darker here, if you are consumed with darkness, that darkness will grow as the darkness out there grows. And you will find yourself doing stuff you didn't think you would do. Because you are carrying his baby. Darkness. Now I'm going to read some definitions of light. This is going to be short and to the point message. But I thought this was very interesting. Okay. Because he keep in mind that God and the Lord is light. And in him there is no darkness. And why I'm reading this. Because then your mind will start to dissect. Just keep in mind that Jesus is light. He's the one and only true light. And in him there is no darkness. And also get that the enemy. Satan is trying to present himself as light. Now I'm going to read. And then you're going to start to understand what dark light is versus the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Instead of looking up definitions and study all day and getting knowledge of this world and knowledge through technology and knowledge through devices. This is going to trip you out. The first definition. <laughs> this is what light means. The definition of light. And please listen, because this is going to baffle some of y'all. Any device. Now they're trying to get you to put your phones on your wrist because they want to track your butt all day. The, God, the definition of light, any device serving as a source of illumination. Device. It could be a system. What did I just read to y'all what system, what device, device was? Device arranged by systematic planning and unit. Please catch this. To arrange by systematic planning and unite effort. One word order. And the first definition of light, and we know Lucifer, they call the light, bring a false light. The first definition of light is any device serving as a source of illumination. Are y'all catching this? The second, the visual effect of illumination of an object, scenes are created in pictures. Okay. Mental understanding as an enlightening experience. Knowledge. He's doing the same thing he did in the garden. He's trying to get you focused on how to get knowledge in the world through devices, through reading, through study, through definition, through the things of the world, rather than the knowledge of the one who made you dark light. OK. A particular perspective or aspect of a situation. He's trying to get you to see his perspective and the Lord needs you to come to him for all your knowledge. Y'all catch that? A visual warning signal. OK, so y'all want y'all to discern dark and light because he's mimicking the light. Some of these definitions describe dark light and some of them are describing him. But we know he's bigger than any word we can dissect. An illuminated area. 
a person regarded very fondly. He's coming as light. Having abundant light or illumination. Next, a condition of spiritual awareness and divine illumination. Y'all notice y'all keep pointing at the word illumina, illumina, illumina? Because they're mimicking. He's light. They're not light. A device of, a device, there it is again, of lightning. <laughs> Those of you who spirit to catch this, are igniting fuel or charges of fire. He's bringing false light. And what did we say? We saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. A divine presence believed by Quakers to enlighten and guide the soul. The quality of being luminous, oh no, brightness and animation of countenance. Who gives your, who brightens your countenance? He said, the Lord left his countenance upon you and give you peace. He's mimicking our God. False light, dark light. And I'm going to give you practical, and I'm already throwing some practical of what dark light is. It's knowledge of the world rather than of him. Okay? To make lighter or brighter. To cause to start burning. We are the burning ones by the Holy Spirit. Subject to fire or great heat. The ever burning fire of the Holy Spirit. To come, to rest, or to settle. Come unto me, you who were heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. But you notice they call him light, but this is under the definition of light. They're trying to mimic our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He gives you rest. He's an anchor to your soul. Settle. Come to rest and to settle. That's light. Are y'all catching this? A little intensity of power or force. Hmm. Moving easily and quickly and nimble. I'm going to tell y'all why that's important. Because people think the speed of light is faster. Was the speed of light faster than the speed of sound? But the, I didn't even know it was a such speed as superlumina. Superlumina squashes every speed you've known. Which I know was what got to be the movement of the kingdom room, which is why you can't see them. It's too fast, you can't even see them. Unless you see them in the spirit. Because the vibration is too fast. Superluminous. Look it up. Superlumina. Okay? Uh... A, okay, yeah, mag power. The military or industry using being, okay, yeah, uh, I could have taken that out. It kind of don't fit, but it's still part of light. And so it makes it the military or industry using, okay? Characterized by or emitting light. Characterized by light. Who's characterized by light? Jesus is light. But who are they calling Lucifer? The light bringer. Then they got the Illuminati, and we know they're satanic. They're mimicking. That's dark light. Okay? Demand, okay, demanding little effort. Are not burdensome. And we know, what did he say? My burden is easy and my yoke is light. But they got another definition of light. And who did they call Lufus Lucifer again? The light bringer. Liars. Okay? Are y'all catching this? Designed for ease of movement. Okay? Little to carry. My yoke is light. I didn't say that. Uh, uh, physiologically light, especially free from sadness or troubles. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. The blessing of the Lord make it rich as the ass, no sorrow. But they describing him as light. Dark light. Knowledge. Here, I got knowledge. I got knowledge. Why y'all think, think they got half the technology they got? Because they talking to fallen angels. They talking to fallen angels. Okay? Just like in the old days, they taught them how to do abortions. They taught them how to make weapons. They Why y'all think they got the technology y'all got? Y'all actually think that just came? That No, they got that from dark light. Dark knowledge. The fallen ones. Make no mistake, they're getting it from the fallen ones. Okay? A sound or color free from anything that dulls or diminishes with few burdens. Same thing. But I hope y'all caught that of what light was. And to sum this up, true light versus false light. The light of the kingdom is being led of the spirit by the sound of his voice, by the knowledge of his will, according to his word. What he says is bad, you say is bad. What he says is good, you say is good. And you allow his spirit to lead you into all knowledge and all truth. The, the, the Holy Spirit brings you into all knowledge, into all truth. By the light of the kingdom, by the light of the word, the entrance of the word brings light. But the enemy is trying to get you to spiritually reach for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil again. Seek the knowledge of the ways of this world, which is what the fallen angels did. They started giving knowledge and techniques. And the, the enemy ain't got no new tricks. He's doing the same old stuff he's been doing for thousands of years. 
He's trying to get you to reach for the knowledge of the tree of good and evil rather than relationship with your father and to follow his voice, to walk with him in the cool of the day, to fellowship and commune with him so he can teach you and talk to you day to day. I'm going to give you small examples. That's why you have to hear his voice day to day. How many of you know it's a good thing to go to work? And we also know that the scripture says if a man don't work, he don't eat. We know we have to work for a living. But we know even on 9-11, there was people who were told and led not to go to work that day. Literally. You have to be led by the sound of his voice. Yeah, it's a good thing to go to work. But what if he, t it's a good thing not to be late to work. But what if he does something to cause you to be late because he knew what was about to happen? He knew a wreck was up the road. He knew there was going to be turmoil in that workplace. We are led by the preceding word out of his mouth. That is the light of the kingdom. Led by his spirit, led by the word of God, led by the true light of the kingdom. The dark light is the knowledge of the world. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world belongs to this evil devil. Y'all better catch the difference. The difference between the earth and the world. The world is the system, the way of living, being, acting, and getting. The earth is this physical place. It's his. The world is this system. Dark light versus true light. You heard it even described devices. Technology. Getting you to seek knowledge. Chase degrees more than the presence of God. Trace them titles of the, of the world more than of God. To lean to your book knowledge rather than the sound of his voice and his wisdom. Are y'all getting it? That's the dark light. The enemy has used the same trick as he did in the garden to get man to reach for the knowledge of this world rather than the enlightening word of God. Take this word before the Lord. That's all I got. And I pray those who caught this, you have to catch this word, okay? This was given by the spirit. If that light in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? And I'm telling y'all why it's important. You got to root, root out all contrariness. Because as it grows darker out there, as darkness gets more gross, that gross darkness can call for the darkness in you. And it will bring you in with it. Get it out. Yield to the spirit. He is the teacher and leader and guide into all truth, the one and only true light, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yahashua, Yahshua HaMashiach, the anointed one. And the only true light is the light of the kingdom and of grace. Quit chasing knowledge and things over relationship because you are falling under the same error in the trickery that happened in the garden. They reached for the knowledge of the tree rather than relationship with God. Take this word before the Lord. I love you all. Those of you who don't belong to the Lord and you have not given your life to him, I urge you by the mercies of God to surrender to him this day. Cry out to him where you are. As he said, that you cry out to me and I will answer. And anybody who calls upon his name shall be saved. Ask him to come into you to save you and to begin to teach you his ways. It is a process. Spend time with him in prayer and read the Bible and he will teach you and lead you to a godly, accurate church so that you can grow. And then you can go grow this too. Grace be with you. Again, do the work of an evangelist. You don't have to be the teacher to share it. And, and get it accredited to your soul as well. Grace be with you and I love you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.